Recently, in my quest to buy my time until Animal Crossing New Horizons comes out, I've been getting to the Japanese side of the community. It's interesting to see how another group interprets certain elements based on their own background, as well as how their gaming experience itself differs. I had so much fun learning about the Japanese community that I wanted to share it with people who don't find it as accessible. I compiled comments from sites and added English translations, including articles about Animal Crossing and Girls Channel, an anonymous forum whose name is based off of Chu-chan, where people, primarily women, can vote in each post. So, here are some of the thoughts, speculations, and memes from the Japanese side of the Animal Crossing community. One of the biggest topics that blew up immediately after E3 was actually the name itself, for a couple of reasons. The first point is that the subtitles for the games have become increasingly more commanding over time. In English, you've gotten the name for taking a noun and putting a word in front of it to describe it. No, I'm not counting, let's go to the city. So, what kind of folk? The city kind! But, in Japanese, it's always been an action. And as the series has progressed, that has gone from being cutesy invitations to being more... demanding. Come on over! Let's go to the city! Jump out! Get together! This person made a similar joke by coming up with the title Animal Crossing, Get to Work! The other topic of discussion about the name is abbreviation. Fans always take the first two syllables from the subtitle and add mori, forest, from dobus no mori. So, for example, tobidase dobus no mori becomes tobimori. Pretty easy. Since the new game is called Atsumare, that means the new nickname is Atsumori. Or in other words, hot soba noodles! Yeah, people have been going nuts over this. People have been using this red and white stamp that uses the kanji for Atsumori dramatically. This stamp is from a news station that would use the phrase to describe exciting baseball plays, and they'd also have the stamp pop up at random times during news segments for a comedic effect. Atsumare doubuts no mori was definitely going for this, right? They're going for Atsumori, right? Coming out March 20th, 2020, Animal Crossing New Horizons. Sounds like it's gonna take place on deserted island. The abbreviation is Atsumori. I thought of Taira no Atsumori. Somehow continue to be exploited by Tanuk Ali gives me a sense of security. However, I'm looking forward to it. But first I need to get a switch. Taira no Atsumori is a famous samurai, but in any case, you can see that the Atsumori nickname has caused quite a stir. In that same sense, something I found interesting was what New Horizons reminded Japanese people of. It can't just be me who thought of Yoiko Desert Island Life. A few people compared New Horizons to his DS game, which is based off of a TV show because it takes place on Desert Island. Being dead to Tom Nook and eventually being banished to Desert Island? It's kind of like Kaiji. Kaiji is a manga about gambler trying to get out of debt. In each arc, he's trapped in a new location until he earns enough money to buy his freedom. Animal Crossing New Horizons. I want Isabel to be in it from the beginning, named the Desert Island Dash. Dash Island developing a desert island. I want to call Isabel and build a town hall, however, there's no need for a town hall. Other people also want to name their town Dash after a TV special about a desert island. Here are a couple more jokes. Tom Nook's dirty jokes in the new version. Not getting a good bell collection rate on the dead around the 42nd island. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it! You can choose to make 500,000 doing a boring job, make 300,000 doing a job you love, or have a 400,000 debt keeping you on an island catching bugs. Hmm. This is a meme based off of a recent advertising campaign by a railroad company that Japanese people have been making fun of. The new crafting feature also left an impression on Japanese fans. Think we'll be able to cook even? We have tasty looking food furniture pieces, but the villagers can only eat fruit. Maybe we'll get new furniture and dishes. I gotta buy a switch. You can also drink coffee. I like drinking coffee in a cafe or getting takeout and relaxing with it outside. It'd be nice if we could cook and eat food. It would become more like Harvest Moon. But at the very least, I'd like to be able to get into the hot springs and baths. I watched the playthrough where they collect materials for crafting. If we're doing things like making axes by ourselves and there might be a lot of crafting materials, I hope it's not some complicated system. In New Horizons, we saw that you can collect flowers to make a crown, but it seems like you can make a wreath to put on your house as well. As long as we don't have to pay real money in order to make the furniture, or even if we have the materials or something to build, I'm okay. The same can be said for the outside furniture and paths. From watching the video, it looks like we can make our own paths. I'm looking forward to it. I wonder what will happen to patterns? There was no information on that. There's no touch pen either, so maybe we'll just get rid of it? Looks like there's custom patterns in New Horizons! I hope we can choose the shape of the clothing too. It was like this in Happy Home Designer too, but in New Horizons now too we can put furniture outside. I bet we'll have a lot of creative horde towns or the masterful drifters who create towns with stories. In any case, I'm looking forward to March. I saw this in New Horizons new promotional video? Footage? This mysterious mushroom keeps bugging me. Is this a new decoration? Everyone's been using mushrooms in their fall layout, so I want to too. I've heard a variety of opinions on the graphics in the game. This is what I found from the Japanese community. The scenery is beautiful, and we can put things on the beach. I'm happy. There's an Animal Crossing course in Mario Kart 8. The town and the animals look super realistic, so I thought that this might look like this, but it's a bit different. It's kind of like a more vivid version of Newly, for the screen feels a bit bigger. I can't explain it very well, sorry. Somehow I get what you mean. It would have been cool to walk through the forest in first person. The weeds and stuff made the game look so detailed. The screen is beautiful. The color balance changed quite a bit. It looks a bit like a stylish clay animation. 
Since they put off the release date, I wonder if they'll put out the cheaper Switch first? I'm going to hold off on buying a Switch. Of course, now we have the Switch laid out. In Animal Crossing and Pokemon, the colors are pastel. Personally, I prefer more vivid and realistic looking tones, so I'm a bit disappointed. Checked it out! I thought that the graphics would be nicer, so I was surprised! But this kind of design is easy on the eyes, so I feel like once I start playing, I'll be able to play for however long without my eyes getting tired. The hair just casually fluttering around based on how you move really got to me. You know what I mean? Besides this, there are many, many other topics that got brought up. Tom Nook not only banished us to an island, he's even making us pay for labor costs on our phones! I laughed when I found out that we're being banished to an island, but I'm happy! Even though the release date was pushed back, they're going to be able to make the game even better, so I'm looking forward to it. I hope that I can enjoy the slow lifestyle and not have hard set requests and features that cost money. I thought that Animal Crossing would come out right away, so I bought a Switch three years ago. I want to play it as soon as possible. I've been saving my 500 yen coins for the past three years for this. I saved up even more than I need for the software. A lot of people on girls' channels said that they don't have a Switch yet and discussed saving up money for it or waiting for what would become the Switch Lite. Many also said that there's no other games out that they want to play and lamented the consumer tax hike in Japan that was going to happen in October. I wonder if we'll get an Animal Crossing version of the Switch when it comes out. Won't people cause a fuss again that having characters with dark skin is determination? We might have the game's release pushed back because of that. If there wasn't, I think that people would complain about that being missing. I wonder if the app will continue after it comes out on Switch? I worked hard to collect a lot of villagers and items, so I really wanted to keep going. There are quite a few people who seem to be into Pocket Camp, and were more concerned about its future than New Horizons itself. Even though I'm some 40-year-old who's never played this, I'm a bit interested in thinking about getting it. What do you do in this game? Build stuff around your house? I like the game Boku no Natsuyasumi that this gets compared to. Other than that, I like cute games like Yoshi and Captain Toad. I love it, but when people ask, is it interesting? I'm honestly like, mmm. Since there's no goals in the game, I think that there's a lot of people who get bored of it right away. A lot of the Japanese fans also like the game series Boku no Natsuyasumi, where you play out a kid's daily adventures in the countryside during summer vacation. I'm thinking about how we'll be able to talk with everyone easily online when we play together. I wish we could make squads like in Monster Hunter. It'd be fun making a squad with everyone here on Girls Channel playing together. I'm afraid of the online play being ruined by tyrant kids like a New Leaf. On Wi-Fi, there's too many scary people making weird requests or kids who want to be rough, so I'm fine without it. As long as there's local play, I'm good. Other people seem to prefer local play to Wi-Fi as well, which personally surprised me. I want age limits on online play. They wrote that you could play online with other island's people, but I'm scared. Please stop having things force us to play online! You can't make a profit unless you connect online, so I think that going online is inevitable. There will probably be a system to sell furniture, clothes, and other things. It was a long time ago, so maybe you're not remembering correctly, but in Wild World, as you bought more things from Nook, you'd upgrade the shop. But for the final expansion, you need to play with someone else. Since I didn't have anyone else to play with, I bought a second copy used and did it on my own. I remember being really upset that for the final expansion, you needed to play with someone else. Hopefully in this game, playing with others will be optional, and you can choose to have fun playing by yourself. Do we really have to pay to play online? One of the good points of this game was that there's no paid features, so everyone was equal. Since you can have your island be in the northern or the southern hemisphere, I'm worried that they're going to have crafting materials or items that you can complete by trying online as a way of forcing us to play online. Considering how things have been going recently, this could happen. I want Animal Crossing to keep being the kind of game where you can play for a long time by yourself at your own pace. If we're going to a deserted island, we might not have retail right away. In that case, how are we going to make bells? From what I saw, maybe we can sell the materials we collected to me and Tommy? I don't completely remember what happened in the video, though. I hope we have the Dream Suite codes again like a new leaf. I need it! I want to play it! But my kindergartner hasn't been introduced to games yet, and my husband is the type who hates games and thinks that if you have that much free time, you should read a book instead. I had to play in secret and hide it from my room, but the Switch is probably too big. It's like the DS version, so I wanted it. I bought a DS just for Wild World, a 3DS for New Leaf, and didn't even buy any other games for it, but that's not for me, so I'll get a Switch. Hopefully there won't be any paid features in the game, that's my only worry. In the last one, midway through the cards were introduced, it got to the point where if there was a piece of furniture you'd buy the card for it. I'm a bit worried about that. The cards were resold too, so they became expensive I couldn't get what I wanted. wonder if I'll be able to use all the amiibo cards I collected. Gathering from what Tom Nook is saying here, it looks like we can go back and forth between a camp, so we might be able to connect to Pocket Camp. I'm expecting to give birth in September, and then I heard that Animal Crossing is supposed to come out in September. I thought, if I have free time, I'll be able to play in the hospital, so I was getting excited. Too bad. Even if I have to reserve it, I'll get it. Hate to break it to you, but in the hospital you're going to be wiped out busy taking care of your kid and whatnot. Even after you get out, rather than playing the game, you're going to want to get every bit of sleep you can get. Digging a hole to hit rocks is so nostalgic. Speaking of which, newly came out there was a viral post that said, My wife won't come back from this forest, because she was so into it. This time too, we'll definitely be seeing more people who are really into it. I wonder if having animals get sick and giving them medicine, and listening in on their conversations with other animals will come back. Fighting, getting angry, feeling down. This wasn't in pocket camp. 
I was just thinking about changing jobs, so maybe I'll quit at March and spend the next three months playing on the island. Besides school years changing, Japanese people will also start new jobs in April typically, so the release date aligns with this. March 20th is also the spring equinox, which is a national holiday, so it works out nicely for Japanese players. I wonder if we'll be able to choose the places where they move to? There was a lot of demand for this last time, so they'll probably look into this. I remember using Pattern Guard, but it was kind of fun too sometimes when I was like, why'd you move there of all places? This is a strategy for trying to get animals to not move in certain places by placing patterns in a block shape but leaving a space for an animal to move in by keeping the inside blank. This is used to prevent what the Japanese called moving terrorism. I would be thankful if we could use buildings and bridges around after the fact. Maybe in the future when televisions and game systems can produce smells and the Animal Crossing VR edition will be able to smell the coffee brewster made for us, the grass and the trees scent flowing through the wind. That's what I've imagined anyways. I'd never stop playing. But maybe we'd have to smell the animals are covered in fleas too. They already put up on YouTube a playthrough of the foreign version. Why is there more information overseas? I wonder if players new to the series will be able to enjoy this? Do you think we'll be able to handpick out the layout for our island like before? When New Leaf came out, I spent two or three days just picking that out. I was really conflicted, like, maybe I'll go with this town. No, I need to go with another one. I want to use a rocket launcher to destroy other people's houses. I want an option to turn out animals when they want to come to my house without offending them. Even in Animal Crossing, I want to be free sometimes. Maybe we'll ride in that perverted coppa's boat again. When he would row us, he would try to show off by saying he had a bunch of licenses, so it'll probably be him flying the plane. I don't want to fly to the island alone with that perverted kappa. Even though the release date was pushed back, personally, I didn't want it to overlap with Pokemon, so I'm part of the minority group that's kind of glad. Hey, what is kind of boring games we ran for almost 20 years? Ugh. All I can picture is Ace playing this little You can recall this game, me, a game is <laughs> Since it's a deserted island, I think it'd be fun if the messages in a bell had returned for Wild World. I wonder how Harriet, Katrina, Copper, and Booker are doing. I want Harvey from New Leaf to be in the new one, too. I've liked Animal Crossing since the 64 era. I'm so excited I can't sleep. For those who don't know, Animal Crossing was originally on the 64 in Japan, before getting ported to GameCube later that same year. I'm looking forward to having a new edition, but I wanted the shopping street to come back too. I could relax in the town, then move to the shopping district, which was like a developed city, and I liked having that clear distinction. I felt like I got enough out of the deserted island and camping elements from the app. I mean, I'm still looking forward to it so badly I could die, but... Maybe if we were to clean the island and develop it, then we could build a shopping district too? Since Mr. Rossetti and Don Rossetti wear construction helmets, it'd be cute if you could see them working on houses and buildings and things. Seems similar to Pocket Camp. Opinions will be split. Things I want to be able to do in New Horizons. Mix and match the banks in the back of the hairstyle. Put patterns on even the details of the furniture. Candlelit Island. For players that think, I'm going to play Animal Crossing to escape the crushing way of taxes on the pension system of our day society. The brute Tom Nook without hesitation bills you for things like labor cost and your smartphone. Ah, I'm looking forward to New Horizons too. I like the shirt that says Forest on it. I want to meet that stupid cheapskate Tom Nook already. The so-called war criminal city folk Kyogoku was there too, huh? I'm already done with playing with others. Japanese people will call someone who's responsible for a big mistake a war criminal online. Japanese people had problems with city folk because of how mean the animals in Rosetti were. In the English version, the GameCube animals are known for being the most rude, which some people want back, but after that they were toned down. However, in Japan, it's city folk that had the roughest sounding animals. Someone online said that an animal threatened to beat them to death, even, and it seems like Kyogoku was blamed for this. Yeah, a lot of people are concerned about it, right? But from this information, it seems like it's going to be too much like Pocket Camp, because New Leaf and Pocket Camp are completely different. I want to play a powered up version of New Leaf! More information, please! This is very off topic, but while researching for this video, I found out that there was a handshake event with Isabel a few months ago that I could have gone to, but I didn't find out about it until now, and I'm very upset. I will write this wrong. Alright, I saved the best for last. Probably the hottest topic of the original announcement was... Us! Well, kind of. The Japanese ad Twitter loved the crowd at Nintendo New York for E3's reaction to the end of the Animal Crossing trailer. This tweet in particular blew up, clocking nearly 110,000 likes when I screenshot this. Every platform that I checked, Twitter, Girls Channel, YouTube, articles, etc. mentioned this. It's funny how the foreign otaku react. Animal Crossing release day is announced. Excited cheering. Seen where Crooked Nook bills you for everything. Oh. I laughed when in the foreign reaction video New Horizons was announced and the crowd was so pumped up and then as soon as the scene came out they started booing. Looks like across the world players feel the same way towards Tom Nook. You can't really see it, but this person is giving a thumbs down about 19 seconds in. Someone's flipping the middle finger. Across the world, Savage Tom Nook is disapproved of. Scary. The staff that made this video definitely had this effect in mind. Just this image. The foreigner's level of tension. I generally thought that the foreign otaku were cute. I really liked the Nintendo chants at the end.
Maybe it's a little weird that I'm ending my video for foreigners with the Japanese Animal Crossing community by looking at the Japanese reactions to foreigners reacting to Animal Crossing Z3 video, but I thought this is the perfect way to wrap things up. Overall, most of the reactions from the Japanese fans are similar to what we're seeing on the English side of the internet. There are some different interpretations of things though, including some of the jokes that are made. But in the end, we're all united in our shared feelings towards that greedy little miser, Tom Nook.